Hello, my name is John Carlyle. Welcome to this, the first of a sequence of tutorials. The purpose of the tutorials is to give an overview of preoperative cardiopulmonary exercise testing. Subsequent tutorials will go into detail about certain aspects, but this first tutorial is an overview. So during a preoperative cardiopulmonary exercise test, we're going to measure three things at the mouth. We're going to measure flow, which is in terms of litres per minute or mils per minute of gas being breathed in and out. We're going to measure the difference in um, the amount of oxygen being breathed in and breathed out. So the consumption will be the difference, again a dot over the V. And similarly for carbon dioxide, we're going to measure the difference between air breathed in and out and that will give us our carbon dioxide output. Now a proactive cardiopulmonary exercise testing lasts a varying amount of time but we're going to draw an illustrative graph along the horizontal axis is time. Now the amount of time somebody's pedals for is up to them but we're aiming for approximately 13 minutes of pedaling during a proactive pulmonary exercise, cardiopulmonary exercise test. And the vertical axis will serve for a couple of variables on this graph. Although we're measuring flow, I'm not going to graph it out. So we are going to have in red oxygen, zero, you're dead. Um, halfway up, we'll have a thousand milliliters per minute. So I'll put this, the um, units on in a moment. So milliliters per minute. And the same axis will serve with the same scale for carbon dioxide. Now we're going to start with the patient not pedaling to the left of this dashed line. They're not pedaling. Now if they are not hyperventilating, the amount of oxygen that they are consuming will exceed the amount of carbon dioxide that they are outputting. This um, relationship, more carbon dioxide, so more oxygen consumption compared to carbon dioxide output, is a feature of what is going on at the cellular level. In some ways, the cardiopulmonary exercise testing is serving as a window on the cellular um, metabolic dynamics. However, we don't want to know what's going on in a single cell. We want to know what's going on in the whole body. So we are uh, necessarily forced to see what's going on at the mouth rather than stabbing somebody's thigh with a probe of some type, which will just measure what's going on in the leg rather than uh, what's going on in the whole body. The amount of oxygen this person's breathing sitting on the bike is more than the amount of oxygen they are using uh, at rest. Now at rest would be lying on the uh, ground, uh, not doing anything. Now lying on the ground, not doing anything, the average oxygen consumption is 2.6 millilitres per kilogram per minute which, as you see, is less than what is termed one metabolic equivalent, or one met. So one met, metabolic equivalent of task, was just a scale designed to com easily compare um, different activities, often at home. Um, but it doesn't have a physiological basis. Um, when people got round to measuring how much oxygen people consumed, they realised that it was less than the uh, 3.5 millilitres per kilogram per minute that the MET uh, is defined as. Okay. So let's scrub those out so they don't get in the way. The exact amount of um, oxygen you use at rest depends upon how old you are, 
um, your body mass, um, whether you're male or female, and the distribution of your body mass, uh, height and weight and so on, fat distribution. Okay, so we've got somebody um, at rest, but n with an oxygen consumption higher than their resting level, because they're not completely at rest, they're having to uh, use their muscles to stop falling off the bicycle. And now we're going to ask them to start pedaling. Now during this first, usually three minutes, I'm going to draw another dashed line. If I click the right thing. Okay, another dashed line. The duration between these two vertical dashed lines is going to be three minutes. And that's the common duration of pedaling, but without any braking on the bicycle. So when you see a cardiopulmonary exercise test, you've got somebody sitting on a bicycle. Um, they've either got uh, on their nose, they've got a nose peg like a swimmer would wear and in their mouth they've got a mouthpiece with a spit collection at the bottom because it makes you salivate to which is connected the um, measuring device that captures flow oxygen consumption and carbon dioxide output alternatively you can have a tight fitting mask that fits over the nose and the mouth Let's click the right thing. Okay, let's get rid of this. So during this period where they're pedaling against uh, no resistance, they are having to accelerate their the mass of their legs round and around. So now usually, so this oxygen consumption is going to go up, isn't it? The oxygen consumption will go up, and it will go up to approximately double then it will settle down into an equilibrium and similarly as long as the person does not exceed what is called the anaerobic threshold we'll get onto that later on the carbon dioxide will go up in a similar way but remain less than the oxygen output this approximate doubling of the oxygen output so it goes up from say 250 mils per kilogram per minute up to 500 mils per kilogram per minute that doubling will be greater if you are accelerating more mass so if you've got fat legs so fat people will have a much greater increase in oxygen consumption maybe over to more than a litre but again their common dioxide output will also tend to match that but remain below it Remember, these people with big fat legs are accelerating their legs down a corridor. So if you're walking next to somebody who's substantially fatter than you are, they are using up a lot more oxygen than you, and they are staying in a way fitter than you because they're having to carry a great rucksack of fat around with them. So that's the three-minute period. And then we are going to have approximately a 10-minute period. Again, it's down to the patient and how I set the increase in braking as the clinician looking after this patient. But we're going to have a 10 minute period during which they're going to pedal against increasing resistance. Now, I am going to indicate with a purple line an increase in the power the person is having to exert. So power is in watts, a watt is a joule per second. Okay. So this is power. So W does not mean work, W means watts. So if you see the vertical scale, again you'll have a vertical scale for power. You see W, that means um, watts, not um, work. Occasionally you'll see it labelled work, which is... Um, an incorrect labeling so the power goes up or the rate of increase in work so the, the rate of work goes up so power is the rate of work work being joules so rate of work is joules per second and that's a watt okay let's get rid of those go that way 
I have to edit this out. There we go. That's better. Okay. So we've got an increase in power during this 10 minute period. Then at the end of that, or they may carry on a bit longer, but let's imagine that they did 10 minutes and they were pooped. They're going to stop. Now during that period, the oxygen consumption is going to go up because you are pushing more and more um, resistance around and around and around. But there is a delay. So the oxygen consumption initially, usually about a minute and a half, doesn't go up. And then it starts going up. And it should go up in a fixed ratio to the increase in power. And that ratio, so this is something one thing you can take away from this particular tutorial. The ox ox oxygen consumption goes up by 10 mils per watt. If we put um, the power scale in a similar way to the auction scale, but it's 10 times less, 200 watts, then we will find that visually these things parallel each other. If the oxygen consumption here, if the oxygen consumption is um, not um, parallel, then you need to check the scaling. So check the scaling here, check whether that is scaled correctly. Sometimes it won't be parallel because there's something wrong with the patient, but that will be for another tutorial. So the person stops pedaling at um, T plus 30 minutes. That's um, three minutes where they were uh, free with it. And then 10 minutes where they were um, pedaling against a higher uh, increasing resistance. And so the oxygen consumption at the end is going to go down. And eventually it will go back down to resting levels. Okay, great. So what happens to the carbon dioxide output? Well, initially, just like option, there's a delay before it goes up, but then it will go up. And subsequent to that, at some point, you will see the carbon dioxide output exceed the oxygen consumption. Again, they get to the end, and again, that will drop as they... Uh, recover. Okay, so this is a brief initial introduction. The next uh, tutorial will talk about some of these aspects that I've introduced in this first uh, tutorial.